chatting to us this morning about community policing and neighborhood watch. Uh, we had someone in studio from Nampal a while ago talking about the Nampal Reservist and the city police also have their own division where the public can get involved. So welcome. Thank you very much for letting us know about it and for taking the time to come in this morning. Um, Helena, just tell us what your role is at the city police. Okay, Mossy, good morning and good morning to the listeners out there as well. My role at the city police is I'm the superintendent for public and community relations. And what that really means is I facilitate the public relations wing of the city police as well as the community policing wing, as well as just the community police relations, trying to... um, enhance that relationship with our communities. So you're the go-to goal if someone from the public wants to talk to the city police and get involved with things there? Absolutely. Not only when you want to get involved, I'm the person that you can also talk to when you're unhappy with something that we've done that you felt we could have done better, but ideally also on on projects of how we can enhance your safety, how we can collaborate as the police and the community to make sure that Vintuk does become a bit, not a bit safer, but becomes a safer place for us all to live and work in. Mm. Um, Just quickly... Um, shortly highlight to us the difference between Nampol and City Police because there is a little bit of a difference and you are we are now specifically talking about the City Police side of it. Mm-hmm. That's a very good question and I think often sometimes, sometimes people uh, are not so clear about what the roles are and who, who does what. What it is, is um, you've got the National Police Force, which is the Namibian Police. Their focal area is the country, the whole geographical country. So they're looking at all the 13 regions. The city police is a metropolitan police. Its focus is the local authority of Vintuk because it's a local authority police Mm. service and therefore not a force. So our jurisdiction ends within the local authority area Mm. of Vintuk. Um, Previously it used to be a little bit smaller but it has been extended now so we go up to the airport, we go up to Nam Waters, you go to Okahania, we go very close to Rehoboth so the borders have been expanded a little bit. But really what it is is it's a municipal police service. And that also makes it very effective because you're very focused on just that area and you can apply all your uh, all your resources to this local area? I think uh, one of the things that we often also face in cities are certain challenges that, um, for instance, when people's dogs are roaming around the street, it's not really a crime per se, but you need somebody who can address that. Or when you have, uh, there are certain, when you have people that play loud music on Mm. the street, you need somebody who can address that. And it's not necessarily a crime per se that you need to lock up somebody. So there are different focal areas that we have, one of which being bylaws. And bylaws is what I'm talking about, Mm. these other issues. But we're also a complementary service to the national police. So we also take care of safety and security issues within the boundaries of, of the city of Vintu okay. because the other thing that one must realize is law enforcement itself is, is a, has a limited human resource capacity mm. and to complement the national police city police was a, a service that was started by the local yeah. authority to make sure Vintu is a capital is safe for you as the resident mm. as well as visitors that visit our city. And speaking of limited human resources um, that, that is our focus, focus this morning, the volunteer initiatives that you also have, the community policing neighborhood watches that you have at the city police neighborhood watch. When you hear that, you think of either uh, a very upmarket suburb in Johannesburg or you think America because that's what they have there. But we actually have it here as well. Explain that a little bit to us. What are these initiatives? Before I get to the neighborhood watch groups or the forums, I'll explain to you why we have those. Mm. Um, In law enforcement, in Namibia in particular, we've introduced community policing, and that's not just with city police, but the national police as well. And what community policing is, everywhere in the world where you go, they have a different definition for it. What it means in Namibia for us is that we're trying to build relationships with the community and trying to educate or create awareness in the community that certain things can be handled by the community and you don't always need the police for that. An example that I can make is often we get calls where people would report that they have 
<laughs> youngsters drinking in front of their yard. Mm. And in this instance, they would call the police. So what, some of the things that the community they can do is just really to talk to one another, talk to the youth and make sure that they don't do things like that. Mm. The other thing is, of course, that the communities can come together to prevent crime in their neighborhoods. Yeah. So community policing, in essence, for us, is that working relationship with the community, making sure that we collectively prevent crime. That's where neighborhood watch and neighborhood forums come in. It's very important because police cannot be everywhere all the time. Mm. And also, in your neighborhood, you probably know your neighborhood better than anybody else. Exactly. You know the people in your neighborhood better than anybody else. And it just makes better sense that you help us prevent, not address crime. In other words, we don't want to just come and arrest the perpetrator after they've broken into mm. the house. We want to make sure that they don't break in in the first place. Yeah. So these community neighbor watch groups set, set themselves up and collectively they start uh, working together to prevent crime. They look at the, the area, they look at the things that promote crime. For instance, in some suburbs you may have they next to a riverbed yes. or they border with a big land of field, uh, uh, grass or mm. wood or whatever. So that makes it a bit more prone to crime because the criminals can hide there. But these neighborhood groups come together then and then they look at the issues that they can address in their environment. They look at the issues that they can address in terms of the relationships with one another because mm. if you don't know each other as neighbors, there's absolutely no way that you can be your neighbor's keeper. Right? Exactly. Like that. So the neighborhood watch programs are pretty much something in that like um, it's the ears in the police, in the communities, where we collectively work together to make sure we prevent crime. We don't address crime, we prevent mm. it. We take away the loopholes that create crime. If in your area you know this is a criminal house, the way criminal activity happens, yeah. or criminals hide in this house, then of course, you know, by working together with the police collectively, we address that and make sure that that is rooted mm. out. That sort of thing. It wouldn't be very helpful if you set up a neighborhood watch that works in isolation mm. from the police. Because what do you then do when there is criminal activity? Yeah. You do need the police uh, to some extent. And not only that, um, the police, the role of the police is to ensure your safety. Mm. So we also don't want you to put yourself in harm's way. Yeah. What we want you to do rather is to work with us to make sure that we put ourselves in harm's way for you. Okay. Um, there are, like you pointed out, there could be other issues in your environment that become safety hazards. Mm. Um, it could be issues of lighting, it could be issues of um, perhaps your your secure your safety issues at home are not mm. in place. Um, it could be that you may need a bit of advice on how to beef up your safety. It, it could be that you need to think about how the street does its things. For mm. instance, one other example that I, that comes to mind now is when you renovate in your in your neighborhood. Very often we have people that would complain that there's an increased amount of burglaries in their neighborhoods following building in that neighborhood mm. or whatever. So. Some of these things need coordination. Yeah. Um, very recently we went to a home where somebody was robbed of their items by somebody that they trusted. They sure. showed somebody that they picked up off the street and this person was a gardener, he had an alarm, uh, sorry, a, a, a remote. remote for the gate and everything. And in just a matter of the lady going to the shop and back, the guy had broken in and stolen a few things. In instances like that, for instance, when you employ someone like that, it's always a good idea just to check with us, do they have a criminal record? Yes. And if not, you, you make sure you have a photocopy of the ID, but we are yeah. also aware that this person is a, a, a worker. Yes. Say, so that if there are other crimes that could be related to this person, we have something to work from. Yeah. In this instance, it was just Peter who worked there. Peter worked there for two months and Peter disappeared with and half, half the stuff. No idea what his surname was, where he came from. And that kind of makes it difficult it for does. us to trace Peter. Yeah. So those are some of those things are the issues that we can work together on okay. just to make sure that you're safer and we do our job. Uh, just to end it off, unfortunately we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. Where can people contact you if they would like to get involved in community policing and start a neighborhood watch group of their own? Mm. They can contact my office. Uh, the number would be 290-3116. They can also send us an email to uh, City Police Public Relations at ventuccc.org.na. 